Collective Podcast. Blessings, blessings to all who are present. This is the Fully Reflected Podcast. It's a true honor and a and a humbling, grateful gratitude overflow to be here with my brother, Hermes Trismegustus. It's been a mm. long time coming. Um, I mean, we've been saying we're going to do a podcast for a long time, and it's finally here now. Yes. Um, I feel like starting on the more terrestrial, because in the next however many minutes, I'm sure we're going to touch all the bandwidths. So uh let me just start by my let me start with my entrance of you and that'll be context and then i'll give the baton um i had seen this like epic page on instagram awakened conscious collective and uh it was one of those like handful of instagram profiles that was like putting out consistent like high level esoteric mystical information that was like oh my goodness this would be a way that i could use social media for my betterment for sure follow and uh then i think it was at like a um some music festival in la mm-hmm. and a I community see, healing event community, a community healing event and i see your avatar and i'm like whoa <laughs> and we just had this like stare and like mirrored moment and just saw the sovereign reflection of like twin twin you know like mirrored soul aspect in the facial geometry in the auric field and had a brief interaction was like whoa and then ended up reconnecting on on the digital and then Mm -hmm. i feel like we really started diving deep at the beginning of the pandemic it was just like 4 a.m yo you up it's like yo yep (laughs) it's lit anime what are you doing oh word what anime Um, and yeah the the rabbit holes have have divided and splintered into many fractals but um that's pretty much been the entrance of our brotherhood but maybe for those who aren't familiar with your work with who you are as a terrestrial and extrasensory expression of the infinite who are you man that is such a great question um big big question um who is anyone really (laughs) uh i guess you could say in this avatar form and function i'm here as consciousness and um an experiencer of consciousness um we, we utilize these names and we program ourselves to have these experiences, but we're really just like liquid mind. And I think that I'm here to remind um, reflections of, of the one that we are just, we're here as a liquid conductor of electricity experiencing the universe. Now we could we could we could start real way way high up, <laughs> but if we could if we could bottleneck it with like maybe as terrestrial as you're willing to get, it, like I don't know if you want government name vibes, well, but like let's go into the matrix real quick. Yeah, like because we're you know today is the day the matrix resurrection does actually cool. release into the world um, as a signal. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, as a if we met on the playground as kids. And actually, interesting enough, this was one of the ways that we connected. I mean, we, we connected on super high level concepts. And at some point I was like, wait a minute, did you like come into this body like this? And then we started connecting as humans, as brothers were being like, no, nah, the trauma was real. Like the awakening was f- fucking intense and it took time. So, I mean, yes, you are liquid mind as, <laughs> as MV and any, any desire to look at, you know, a little bit of the origin of how you came to this current level of insight or? Um, yeah, the human experience is real. Um, when I was about 21, a voice came to me. You Like the type of voice you think is like a thunder, thunderous, godly voice. And it said, drop everything that you're doing and follow our cues. And from there, um, I would receive information in dream state um, from these beings and they would show me uh, complex systems of magic and geometry. And then I would wake up and sure enough, they would be entire systems already. 
which is wild to me. Like the entire, I, I entire I, systems I, meaning entire systems meaning you saw the stuff that you saw in the dream out in the world already. Yeah, like like they taught me how to count. Um, they taught me how to count in Hebrew and hexagrams, and I would wake up, and then I found out that it was an entire system already. So these things were were happening for probably a year and I would have lucid um, astral experiences and like every night I would one night before I wake up I would have sleep paralysis and I, I would enjoy it because I found it as like a moment to be um, lucid and travel and I would utilize that um, as a means to like lift the veil I guess you could say and from there on, um, I, I followed the cues. I came across these books. The books that changed the, the main book that changed my life is the Kybalion. When I read that, um, in a particular excerpt of it uh, about how whenever the light of man dims, there will always be one to to recarry the torch. I knew that that was my job. Um, I knew in my soul that that was my purpose here. And from then on, um, I've been studying many different systems of gnosis, um, working on bringing that in a digestible way to our generation. This was one of the main things that we first connected on was like Thoth, Hermes, Trismegustus, Mercurius, Merlin, Tehuti, yeah. Ketopoto as like, I remember we were talking about it was like, I saw it in your facial geometry. And mm -hmm. there was another brother um, you can probably remember his name faster than me. Um, he was at one of those conscious festival got vibes. Um, the home schmo, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was Michael. like, a, a, yeah, yeah, Michael. Yeah, a couple of homies like had this facial geometry where it's like Christ consciousness embodied in a very particular way, where it shows up as handsome intelligence. It's the best way I can describe it, but it's also a kind of kind feminine softness mm -hmm. where it almost moves towards androgyny mm -hmm. and doesn't have this like sharp angular handsomeness of like matrix buff Saturn, handsome you know, <laughs> yeah, you're handsome what? Handsome Squidward. Handsome Squidward. Yeah. It doesn't really have that vibe. Um, yeah. But that was, I mean, Kabbalion or the Kabbalion, however you pronounce it, I'd always call it the Kabbalion, but mm -hmm. that and then the um, Emerald Tablets were huge pieces of my awakening out of my kind of initial, initial temporal tribal identity complex. Mm -hmm. um, it's official. Um, Triple three. I've, know, I've known you for a while. You've always had the, the timers go off at very great times. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, the Kabbalion and then the Emerald Tablets. And um, I think I think the, the thing that I'm already feeling my heart wants to zoom in with you is like, I don't, I've, I've mentioned this to people since I've known you is like, you know, in, in literally like framing you is like, if I'm going to mention you like, you know, other than myself, I don't know really anybody who can dive as deep into the esoteric occult issues and topics as my brother Hermes. And like, I, <laughs> I frame it like that. So to me, it's like we could probably go in places where we lose folks. I mean, we could always, we could always make it a competition. It's like, how fast can we lose folks? But I think there's this heart kind of compass for me already of like, um, man, okay, so I'm seeing the tapestry. And I, I sent you that yoga video or the, the Christian dude talking about mm -hmm. yoga, demonic and stuff. And mm -hmm. if you're listening to this podcast, I've mentioned it now multiple times. And I, I do so because it feels like one of my dharmic callings is to resolve extreme polarization and disconnect. And I see that showing up in a very practical level as like the need for integral spirituality is not spirituality it's humanity it's humanness mm -hmm. and when spirituality is stuck as psychological concepts i think that's where that's where religious dogma you know identity which is call it spiritual ego that shit gets out of control there but i feel like i want to talk to you or at least one of the things to start zooming in on um mm -hmm 
is like, yeah, integrated spirituality and like looking at trauma, but not getting stuck in the shadow work and yeah. being pristine, being bright, being clear. Anything that's showing you that you'd like to zoom in on regarding like, I'm sure you've inter interfaced with the tribal identity complexes and mm -hmm. you know really sticky stuff there, but what's become super tactile and and technically relevant and pragmatic for you in the journey of like all the esoteric and at the end of the day it's just you just you and a body and the stuff that you got mm. so yeah i love this <laughs> every so everything is interconnected you know everything is woven woven into the same tapestry really and so like the the body, the physical body, the emotional body, uh, the mental body, and the spiritual body are one and the same. We exist in these four worlds simultaneously in all moments and all time spaces. And everything really comes from spirit. It comes from like divine mentalism, and then it trickles down into form. And so they're all connected in that way, which is really interesting. So when you're working on like the physical stuff or like the emotional stuff, right? Um, if you have trapped uh, emotional or even mental energies, because it is sponsoring the mental, it manifests as a physical ailment. And from there, in order to release that um, discomfort from your body, you have to acknowledge the emotional trauma that you experience. And a couple of keynotes that I received from you that are very potent is that, um, we chose our karmic structures and each one of our karmic structures is there for a reason in, in order to um, bring about the catalyst for our alchemical evolution, right? And we affect others with our karma as well. And I, I think I mentioned this to you yesterday, but like it's so tailored and custom to everyone. Like it, there's no like one, one size fits, fits all, right? I think that's amazing. Um, and another thing that comes to mind is uh, Wu Wei. Like the fact that you brought up Wu Wei. Um, and I, I love that. It's like, it's very Shaolin, right? Like, the, um, like acknowledging that you are like eternity encapsulated within a, a monkey being. <laughs> and at times you need to take the mask off and be like, hey, I'm a monkey just like you are. <laughs> yeah, like I see, I see that as the super relevant recent piece because i think i got like you very heady some would say and that was really relevant like i needed to get out of the monkey disidentify consciously healthfully disidentify with the monkey and now it's kind of like on the integration side of things wow the, the monkey is sacred and it's like yeah. you know the idea of hanuman more and more is like yeah. super super pragmatic um so put put the definition of Wu Wei into your own words for a second. Um, Wu Wei is is like being the magician and the fool, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's um, it's acknowledging what the moment calls for and showing up as that. Which I don't know how personal you're willing to get, but you know that's part of my genius frequency is. Very, this, this, yeah. disassemb disassembling the veils of i just had to get a little bit of the sunset palette here oh. um still would love to host you if you ever want to come out the way um so you were in it yesterday actually yeah <laughs> what can you share with us that you that you unraveled from that because you were saying you were kind of in a space for almost i don't know if it was days or like a week or whatever but you were like almost like a fog was, was starting to happen. And then yesterday you went into a, uh, an unpacking of it. And you, mm -hmm. you want to share what you, some of what you discovered there? Yeah. Um, a couple things came through and it, it's things that are very simple. Um, I don't know, I, I received data very interestingly. So like I was, do I see gateways um, and tunnels? It's like, um, if you're looking at the flower of life, for instance, right? It's a 2D representation of like a 3D to 4D, 5D model, right? 
And when you're looking at a petal of the flower of life, that's actually um, a gateway. So it looks like a sine wave, but if you render it in 3D and then you go from one end to another, it's a portal. And it's a portal of perception. And so one of the visuals I got the other day is that um, in dreamscape, you're like traveling through this journey, through this like hallucinogenic, like DMT dream state journey. And you're in the experience. Um, and the only way to get out of the experience is to have something disrupt it, like a frequency or sound or a bubble popping or something, a snap, right? And so um, sometimes our consciousness ends up in these, these uh, fluid-like states and we need some alternative chemistry, I guess, if you want to call it, to come through and shout out to inception and the kickback technology yeah that's yes i was just talking about that yesterday actually which, which i see as super synesthetically based it's like the light body has to be untoggled from its kind of monotony with the body body with the food yeah. body um mm -hmm. with with the koshas the koshas are locked in until they get uh provoked out mm -hmm. which is like culturally happens uh and it anatomically happens psychologically happens those are the little disruptors but yeah to that point you said yeah and these 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 abstract forms come in like in terms of mentalism and so i was receiving these um so i was listening to 963 hertz and the frequency actually becomes sentient after you listen to it for some time it becomes sentient and it speaks to you um and when I say that, let me just explain a little bit more about that. Every geometric structure is frozen. Like geometric architecture is actually frozen sound. So uh, numbers create vibratory frequencies, right? Every thought form you have is like sonar, it's echo, <laughs> it's vibratory frequency, right? And so in cymatics, it's the study of how um, sound vibration creates geometry. And so your thought forms and your consciousness is actually emitting frequencies all the time. And these frequencies and geometries are actually living structures of consciousness, which this is, is why we're here. This is a quantum mechanics of the law of attraction. Yeah, exactly. Because like attracts like. So similar geometries will attract similar geometries. It's just how it works, right? This is how molecular bonds work. This is how like constellations interact with one another that affect our internal microcosmic worlds and chakra system. As above, so below. Exactly. As it is. Oh. As universe of the soul. <laughs> And, and so these are, these are kind of overarching like framework adjustments that you were getting. What was there something that was like on a visceral level as a human that was, you know, uh, uh, extracted from that abstract? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So um, I was recognizing like childhood trauma that I didn't realize was still in my body and uh, acknowledging it and find myself to forgive um, the karmic structures that others carried that you know forced their way into my karmic structure that made me who I am. Um, I think it's really important to like do the shadow work and integrate it, but don't stay there, you know, because you can be there forever. You can literally enter any type of universe or realm of frequency and be there forever. Like get the codes you need, extract the, the the jewel from the lotus, and keep it moving. <laughs> Which is really Wu Wei. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also a Jeet Kune Do. Uh, yeah. Absorb what is most useful, discard what is not helpful, add your own unique flavor, whip it up. How much? Um, Wow, there's these birds flying above me so often, and I keep hearing like you can hear their wings. It's very profound. Um, I was gonna say how much credit do you give, but no, it's like um, how much 
No, no, that's not the right beginning. How substantial is the better question? How substantial is our current kind of, um, cause I, 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 I sense that we can all agree that growth isn't linear, but it does come in these valleys and in peaks. I think that's a common yes. a human experience. Like, man, I'm on a, I'm on a wave off, man. It's, I've been in a couple of days worth of a thing, um, ups and ups and downs. Yeah. How substantial do you feel the idea or the concept or the identity complex of um, like spiritual ego has become in the collective basically like in the past 20 years like you never heard people talk about spiritual ego before like i don't know when yeah. like how substantial of an identity addition is the idea of spiritual ego to the collective and in, in our kind of mass psycho healing yeah um and well i'm just going to speak from my personal experience like being a quote-unquote like spiritual influencer i guess people would call it um being in the community, there's a lot of um, growth that still needs to take place. I feel like it's still in its infantile stages where people are still recognizing their core wounds and acknowledging them rather than compensating through use of intellect, right? And I feel like it's really important to acknowledge the human experience and that the human experience is the spiritual experience. <laughs> and so right now we're we're in this stage of um of self-reflection and i guess you can even say calcination where it's like we're destroying ourselves to be able to understand ourselves and i feel like it, it honestly will always be like this because there will always be people at different levels of the mountain <laughs> thank you for succinctly tying that bow tie um thank you. you just you just popped two things in me so one is what's it like working with a social media account with that much traffic? And I'd love to like, I mean, as detailed as we can get, because I think that's something that is super relevant for a lot of people. They think that their lives are going to change when they get bigger social media numbers. Yeah. And I think you could probably say otherwise, but quick, quick little like sticky note on that idea. The other idea is it kind of goes back to, I think his name is, you know, God bless this, bro. I think his name is Everett Roth, the, the Christian speaker dude that I sent you when he's saying is yoga demonic and all this stuff. And um, I told you that origin story, how it came into my life. My mom had sent it to me and she's like, Rock, I want you to watch this. And I'm like, mama, this is, this is nutty. I, I can't even get a minute in. This is, this is psychosis for sure. Yeah. Um, but because he speaks this frequency for her, um, my brother Jamuna had put it to me in a, in a beautiful way. He said, try to see it from Shemaine's perspective. You know, she doesn't understand, Shemaine's my mom, you know, she doesn't understand this yogic stuff that you think is so good, but she sees this young dude named Everett and he seems to be speaking a loving frequency that matches her vernacular framework in such this perfect, beautiful way that it's the perfect smell, sound, complex facial geometry, vocal tone. He is the perfect medicine that helps her in a moment have this, oh, that's kind of like Rocco. Let me send that to him. You know, maybe, maybe she didn't think that it was going to activate me in the way that it was, but um, where I was going with mentioning that is in the same way that you kind of really po quickly pointed at like this calcination and spiritual ego complexes. Um, I was reading Nisargadatta at one point, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that teacher. It's like a non-dual kind of vibe. And um, he has a book called I Am That. So it's really much like disassembling the I Am presence and then going prior to the I Am presence. And it's a lot of like yogic, Vedantic, Vedantic, like self-realization techniques that are really pragmatic. Bentinho Massaro references him a lot. And he's a powerful um, lineage holder of, he, I don't think he, I don't think he's a dis exact descendant of uh, Maharishi, R Ramana Maharishi, but he's like similar, like koans all day. Like, you know, wh why am I trying who is it that is asking the question? You know, like that kind of his uh, books like that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
and I was in that frequency for a second. Um, and someone said like, well, you know, uh, they said something about spirituality and I was like, shut the fuck up. There's no spirituality. There's no such thing. It's just nowness, humanness, realness. But you have identified as a psychological body mind mm -hmm. disconnected from your spiritual activity so that the word spirituality actually means the spiritualization of your psychology. Yes. But for spiritual beings or for just fucking beings, it's not, <laughs> spirit, it's not, it's not even spirituality. It's just ality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and what does that pop up in you? Yeah, I agree. It's um, like I had aforementioned, like we are simultaneously existing in these four worlds and realms at all times, and they bleed into one another. Like they're not separate. We could separate them if we want to understand them, but essentially they're one and the same, and they express themselves in different uh, frequency and form in their realms, their assigned realms. So I'm seeing this sunset and, and to me, there's like massive codes in sunsets and sunrises and, Beautiful. you know, bandwidths of frequency that yep. compress ions for our visual experience as heat gradients, which mm -hmm. shows up as the color, the, the color spectrum. And I see the consciousness is doing the same thing in the collective and we call it gradients of spiritually realized people or gradients mm -hmm. of emotionally intelligent people mm -hmm. um i think it's really interesting that you know the matrix of resurrection mm -hmm. I'm, very, I'm very interested to see it and then i think we have to have a follow-up conversation as soon as we absolutely um, um mm -hmm. yeah no go ahead on that tip let's get into um the Christ, let's get into to who Neo is, like the neocortex, right? Let's get into the fact that a majority of people actually are, are just misinformed and they don't have a lot of the data to actually understand like the whole story of Christ, right? Because a lot of books were taken out, like the Book of Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, uh, Solomon's books on magic as well, which were all in the Holy Bible. And the Holy Bible uh, in Greek translates to Helios Biblios, which means sun book. So it's an alchemical book full of encryptions. And so you can look in the beginning, like the first story, which is the, the book of Genesis. And in the book of Genesis, line by line, it's actually describing how to create uh, the flower of life, which is a simulation structure of geometry which becomes the garden of eden yeah which is the place where the solar helios spiritual aspect of self which is the non-physical consciousness that is orienting into the material world the helios or this this sun spot that the yeah. eye is coming into the world through gets into the garden and the garden has really specific geometry which to some, to some muggles it sounds like woo, woo weirdo stuff but then yeah. you eat some psilocybin and you look at the grass yeah. you, you you look at the grass and the grass is as god as a the biggest church in the world the grass has its geometry and the geometry is not dead it's living breathing mm -hmm. pulsating and um, I remember you, you were the first one to ever brought to me that etymology of Genesis. Take that mm. to talk. Yeah. Uh, Genesis comes from the etymology of genes of Isis. It's the, the gene codes of the, the creatrix of the void, essentially. And so a couple things come to mind. One thing I want to touch on is the fact that we are a solar being. We are soul. We, we, we don't have a soul. We are a soul. We, we experience the soul through spirit. The spirit is an external projection of a hologram that we call our aura. We think we see things around us, but they're just an internal projection of our, our, our solar being, right? And um, a bit on psilocybin, 
So something that I notice is that the visuals that you get on psychedelics, it's very um, mercurial, it's very liquid, right? It's very fluid. And it's like when you introduce your consciousness to a different frequency, what's happening is a liquid consciousness is entering your reality, like chemistry. Al chem. Yeah. Um, y- you just popped a, a pimple on what I think is this... <laughs> primary global and i speak into a laptop from texas so i'm obviously skewed but the prime prim, it seems like the primary religious tribal identity complex that is a, a pure reflection of the pain body is um i mean i got to i got to frame it in a nice way i love several beautiful christian friends that are just divinely loving people in my life in a close proximity um but man what a when i when they start revealing their framework it seems so wonky to me and i don't hear no reverence of the divine feminine it's almost like the feminine has somehow got lensed as the sin yep. and it and it sounds so i'm talking like i mean you, you, that face you just made you're like ears are popping it's like i'm listening to like a like a vinyl record that's like the Beatles reversed it and there's like car crashes going on. I'm like, what? Number nine? I'm like, no, what is this? What What do you assemble? How does that assemble in your framework? Um, coming from Rome, the hyper-masculine, but then they made Jesus. The, where, how does the feminine get so abused and so denoted in the hierarchy there? And obviously as a reflection, literally as a quantum mirror in the ending of Pisces moving into Aquarius, um, elementally, how does, how does, how did the feminine get pushed down so far on the hierarchy? All right. <laughs> A couple points. Um, well, the church has always hidden the sacred feminine, but they hide it in their structures, like in plain sight. So like, if you enter cathedrals, you'll, you recognize that like the cathedral door is a giant yoni. It's a gateway. And so, they basically we, we live in a culture where we want to we're hyper focused on logistics and electric currents we only want what's tangible right only what you can experience with the five senses which is ridiculous because as um electrical conductors we're really only experiencing 0.000001 percent of the light light spectrum so we don't even see what's actually going on Majority of the coding is actually hidden in infinite perpetual nothingness. <laughs> and so. So the reason. Mm-hmm. You go, you go. You're making me look at something really specific. The different how, how most people are only focused on how much income they make, which mm-hmm. is really based on their what they want the outcome to be. But yeah. they don't think about their output. Yeah. This um anyways, that's what you were making me look at. Keep continue, please. Um, yeah, the it's like it's very strange to me that there's no inquisitive quest for the ion within. Like there's no questioning of like what am I? Who am I? What am I actually doing here? Right. Well, not in the West. The West is hyper material world focused on the matrix. Yeah. But what's, what, you know, India is this other, you know, segment of it. Um, but yeah, the West is definitely hyper focused on this masculine aspect of what I am, not who I am. It's really interesting, too, because like the sun rises in the East and sets in the West. <laughs> uh, break that down. Uh, the rise and fall of consciousness, the wake and sleep cycles, um, you know, consciousness and subconscious, unconscious. I feel like it just makes sense alchemically <laughs> that everything is coded the way it is. And it's very interesting when we look at it because it's like this, everything's so dualistic, but like the, the dualism is the illusion that we're here to see through. Great theory. Uh, the in between is really the goal. The in between is really where this wisdom lies. And um, 
dualistic minds want to make it this or that. Are you gay or straight? Are you man or woman? Mm -hmm. Interesting, this this coming up, um, had this powerful talk with this sister Gianna and I'm looking at, and she was assisting me in seeing, it's like the evolution of us to now was having having this moment in society where people are like violently saying, don't call me him. Don't call me a she. I'm in this, I am in, in this place that's not binary. That's not, when I hear binary, I hear duality. Don't try to, um, I heard this phrase a lot lately, don't, tr don't other me. It's like, it's like there's awakening happening social, socially. And that's this, that's also this mirror. And I mean, it triggers people, but it's also a reflection of like, man, we're waking up out of the dualistic framework and we're realizing yeah. that there's gradients. Yeah. What do you see as the mathematics of that in, you know, other planes? What comes to mind is that, um, we're really just water and water is my, so in Egypt, the hieroglyph for water is mind. And so what that tells me is that, well, if you follow the you know, first principle of hermetics, you know, all is mind, mind is all, the universe is mental. That means everything's really just water. It's a liquid Christos. It's consciousness. It's programmable geometry, right? Let me backtrack that a little bit. So, I am just 80% water. I'm literally just a cup of water, just like everyone else. And we're here experiencing what it means to be, you know, to be soul. <laughs> and soul doesn't have one form. Like we exist as magnetic and electric beings. And to deny that fact is to deny our, our very nature. And of course there's like, you know, psychological operations and stuff going on to separate people and leave them like drag them more into duality but one thing that I, I find very important is the understanding of the divine hermaphrodite and alchemy and it's inner understanding the divine union of your masculine and feminine nature that's what's going to allow you to expand your consciousness your awareness your auric field in order to have the proper cocoon to be able to go through that metamorphosis to evolve into your next stage of evolution, which is like an angelic Christic being. Which is why when, when one who can hear listens to pimp a butterfly, it's like, that's what's happening to Christ in the matrix. Let me, let me zoom in on that a bit. Cause we even said, you even said it a second ago. It's like, let's really break it down. Neocortex, who is Christ? What is Christ? Mm -hmm. um, this has become, as you know, my prime, one of my very primary signals and, and callings and dharmic specifications. And it seems more and more I'm being kind of anointed as like, man, I have this really specific perspective because of my trauma, because of my calling and framework and karmic mirror quantum situation. Um, Jesus is a word that was not even around when <laughs> Yeshua, the real person, was doing alchemical, tantric, mm -hmm. Egyptian, priesthood, Hebrew, social revolutionary disruption, algorithm, fuck everybody, God looks like this. And then the Council of Nicaea happens, and then the books get edited, the same folks who killed dude are like, man, I don't know. He seems to be pretty popular. Let's capitalize. Like <laughs> I don't know, guys. I think we should get in. I think we should get in on this before it's too late. Bitcoin's still going up. It's not too late. Oh, uh, fuck. That's good. <laughs> so when I see a Christian, a Buddhist, a yogi, I don't, I don't care what the mind says about you. What's your vibration? How pleasant are you? How do you carry the self? So this is what Raja Yoga gave me is the self is Christ. The Christos is the soul self. The soul is the soul, solar, solar emanation of the I am, the I, the I, I. The only awareness that is around 
This is one of the things that broke, popped the bubble for me. Who's looking through every body? We call it me, but everyone calls it me. Everyone calls it I. This was like mind fuck type vibes for me until I found Raja Yoga. And I even heard about a dude named Ram Das, but I was like, eh, heard about a dude named Krishnamurti. I was like, eh, I can't really, eh, it doesn't sound really, I don't like it. And I think Yogananda was the first place I got. I was like, whoa. And you know where I got into Yogananda with Steve Jobs. I'm like uh, 24 years old, living in LA, design obsessed, music obsessed, hip hop obsessed. And I hear this story. I think it was because I read Walter Isaacson's Steve Jobs biography. And I, I, I believe it's in there there's a story that it says Steve Jobs asked for one book to be handed out to everyone that attended his funeral. And it was the autobiography of Yogi. I heard that and I was like, Steve seemed to be a pretty smart guy. I can't imagine that that's for no reason. Mm. Start, start listening to that book. And I remember it just felt like, and this is before I ever touched DMT. It felt like, you know, that stillness where something is like a happy, it's like God's touching you. God's orchestrating a cloud to like catch you as you thought you, the tricycle was going to fall. And then like the Michelin man just catches you with <laughs> fluffy, fluffy arms. Um, divine interaction, divine alchemical interaction, firsthand experience of the, of the, of divine interaction. Um, and so, yeah, man, I mean, I think this is part of why I felt you as a brother of medicine, because I was like, man, Thoth, which then I end up unpacking is like, okay, Thoth did some stuff. He's like an actual being. He has like karmic structure. Hermes, same freaking being. Whoa, different iteration, but like same soul essence working out that karmic structure and then get to the Merlin aspect of it. And it's like, whoa, what if Yeshua didn't die at 33, but he's like 83 and he's like, I'm going to just hang tight until some whippersnapper comes around who's really ready to, you know, activate shit, you know, and enter Arthur. Um, and then the Merlin line is really the Mary lineage, the Mar line and the water line, the water lineage. So it's like there's so many esoteric unpacks of who Yeshua is for real. And like, to me, I'm more of a true Christian than most people that I meet that say yeah, I'm a Christian which I won't say I'm a Christian because that's connected to just such a radical amount of trauma and karmic structure. That's like, funny enough, it seems to be connected to pale skinned unawareness people. Um, funny enough though, right? Mm -hmm. the, the amount of trauma that Caucasian Euro lineage people implanted on the whole <laughs> western world in the name of jesus mm -hmm. killing these people raping these people sending these dirty blankets to these other people um and then I, the more and more i got out of my echo chamber of only talking to basically yeah modern roman catholic christian indoctrinated christian people identified as that the more and more mm -hmm. i talked to people who are more interested in like true sight they, they're interested in a in labeling it they wanted true sight. Um, like the whole idea of white Jesus really popped up on the internet, like powerfully, which obviously people like Louis Farrakhan been talking about it. And um, oh man, I wish I could go go on some roll of some Bobby, Bobby. Obi -Wan. Is it Obi -Wan? <laughs> uh, what's that? What's my teacher's name? Yoda. He's a good one. Um, but no, like these, these moments happen on the internet, at least for me, of like, whoa, there's another reflection that this whole Jesus situation is a karmic trauma for the collective. Because the yeah. dude is really the dude. Like, yeah. Gautama was really the one. Yeshua is yeah. really the one. Obi-Wan's really the one. Yoda's really the one. Like, the Akashic field is not lying. It's really clear about these records. Mm -hmm. But then these wild distortions of these real situations happen yeah. like i've heard terence mckenna or ram das or somebody like that say like you look you go hang out with a bunch of buddhists and most likely none of them really know buddha 
Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You're angry with some Christian, you know, most likely they don't really know what Christ means. Yeah. So it's like these initial fountainheads touched <clears throat> the God light, the God sight, popped it. They are that now. And yes, that's the living, breathing truth, the effervescent effulgence of the infinite now for real, for real. And then others got nearby that and was like, ooh, I want that. But they wanted it from the mind. They wanted yeah. it from the ego social complex because of what that looked like to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a mentor, Dr. Colby Baron Foreman. Um, I was really convinced I was going to get my PhD in, in uh, neuropsychology. Didn't happen yet. But he talked about camera on the inside versus camera on the outside. Mm-hmm. When your camera on the inside, you get in the car that you've wanted for so long, you, you saved up the money and you get in, you're like, oh, the leather steering wheel, man. Oh my goodness, the f- big old sc- screen, the dash. I'm so, it, you're in it. Your, your camera of your perspective is inside of yourself. And so you're experiencing it for you, by you, for us, by us, etc. And mm-hmm. camera on the outside is like, you get in the car, your dreams are like, man, I, I wonder how I look. And you try to see yourself from the outside which is the ego mind. And that's a, a, a fast way to look at what the ego mind is. Um, I just went on quite the monologue. What, what popped up in your, your framework during that? It oh, came I, from the, I, it came from the Neo stuff and talking about the like, you know, true crisis, what we started. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. A couple of things popped up. I'm glad you brought these. I'm just loving this conversation right now. <laughs> this topic's great. Uh, these topics are great. Um, it just brought me to a flashback that I experienced the other day where I was like in my room, but like in my body. And then I stepped out of my body and then out of the box in my room, then out of another box. And I was like, oh shit, there's simultaneous earth planes of me happening right now. And I can like navigate through these realms because I am mind and consciousness. And uh, <laughs> another thing that, that pops up for me is... Um, non about Hermes, um, Enoch, uh, Quetzalcoatl, all these these names. I'd like to bring up some a bit of galactic history so we have a better understanding about who these beings are and what lineage they're actually connected to. Please. My understanding. So, um, yeah, Hermes is an archetype of consciousness. It is the divine union of fire and water that creates steam that is able to rise to the heaven and come back down to earth as rain and nourish the world, right? It's, it's mercurial in that nature that it's able to walk in the spirit realm and then return to the physical form. It, it's funny that that term mercurial has become used for so many things, but it's, it, it's mercury, mercury, Hermes, it's not- this. Mm-hmm. And so, some galactic history on um, Yeshua as well. Like, like you said, the phonetic J didn't exist. Um, it was with a Y. It's Yeshua, and Christ means crystal. It's it's Christos. It's liquid. It's the the sacred secretion that exists within the body. It's an, an alchemical process that happens within the brain. Um, that on on t- on two days of the month the moon is in your sun sign and when it is it creates a holotropic germ inside of your solar plexus and if you do particular um like pranayamic breathing and bring the liquid down and then push it back up this is known as the um (laughs) wow proper the crucifixion of christ and the resurrection so let's get into some new stuff (laughs) Um, from the neocortex um the brain emits a liquid um from the pineal gland goes around the brain casing through use of the nerves cerebrospinal fluid yeah it 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 pushes this fluid through through the vagus nerves which sends the salts or the soul right of the body into the sacral which is the sacred um, and from there, it, it goes through this journey of how Yeshua went to hell to retrieve this key and then had to come back in order to be resurrected, right? This is the story. It's our story. And how proper, because it's also 
Christmas or Christos Mas. <laughs> so um, from the sacral, you do this breathing technique and then you push up the cerebral, cerebral spinal fluid up the spine and it rests in what is known as the cave of Brahma on the back of the neck and the nape of the skull. And that is where Christ rests for three days as this alchemical liquid. From there, the process of transmuting water into wine occurs. And then it returns to the pineal gland and it creates a massive neural connections as if you were on psilocybin. That's the front door method of achieving enlightenment. Because enlightenment is essentially, uh, when you break it down etymo etymologically, it's N, which is enter, light, which is like biophotonic light, ment, which is mente. So the process of enlightenment is pulling biophotonic light into your mind's eye to be able to see the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so some historic background on christ as well he i think someone has said like the the greatest miracle yeshua has ever done is be a white man in the middle east right <laughs> and so he like he essentially wasn't it so the entire story of christ is based off of the four um segments of the spine and each segment of the spine represents his age. And so from age 12 to 22, I believe, there's a huge chunk missing of his life story where he goes and does masonry, right? Well, what is masonry? It's also known as like being a free builder or a Freemason. So essentially he joined a secret society and there were secret societies in Egypt back in the day. Um, Knights Templar is actually a group of um, monks that are like knights, warrior knights. And I'll get into that in a second. But so Yeshua essentially has this gap missing. And in that gap is where he was studying these sacred uh, mysteries, Tantra, yoga, Reiki, energy work, right? There's, there's amongst those who know there's literally like, he was gone 18 years, went to yoga, got lit as a yogi, went to i don't know if it was china exactly where but um japan learned reiki literally hands off healing hands on healing learn these different alchemical techniques but also from this magdalene manuscript thing talked about how mary was an initiate in the priesthood of isis in tantra and yeshua's mom was also that in same initiate and they wore some kind of a band on their arm so when when she saw mary uh younger mary um which i think the fact that they have the same name is a thing too but yeah, sorry, keep going. But those those other pieces of like, no, let's like let's humanize this and also make it super biomechanical. Cause I think that's where mm -hmm. folks it's like talk about duality too. Sorry, yeah. keep going, you're on a roll. I love that. Um, so the Helios Biblios, the Bible, the Holy Bible, is an alchemical encrypted book. So it would make sense that um Yeshua and all the stories in it are physiological chemical processes of achieving enlightenment and so at from age uh what is it 32 to 33 right that's like his completion cycle he went through uh what is known as resurrection and what happens in resurrection is essentially um the initiate goes into the the king's chamber in the great pyramid he lays down in the king's chamber the Ark, Ark of the Covenant actually sits in there as a orgone generator for free energy technology. But if you go in there and you sit there and like on the solstice or something, right, and the stars are aligned proper and the initiate is in there, what happens is the energy generated from the um, limestone aqueducts underneath create massive amounts of chi, prana, bioelectricity, whatever you want to call it. And it sends directly into the chamber and shoots the soul of a person out of body into the constellations. And then Yeshua returned back into his body, which is why he's so popular and why he's so well-renowned for resurrection. Like the most lit of all time. Yeah. Um, and and then what's the connection with this and the and the and the Giza and and Sirius and then what was yes. that lady what was that lady that we were we were talking about and she had a phone out with Drumvlo or she had that lit page uh, the community um, um, Ashayana Nadine. Ashayana Nadine. 
and, and she had, she had, I saw this video, she had made, and mind you, like we're two humans with gnosis and also our own subjective lensing. And we've seen other moments where others have had their subjective lensing and it resonates with us as like, wow, yeah. that's really what happened. Yeah. And um, there's this video, I think we both saw, it's from, from Nash, sorry, Ashiana Nadine, is that how you say it? Ashiana Dean. Ashiana Dean. She goes by Anna Hayes now, I think. Or maybe Anna she changed the again, I'm not sure. I'll roll with that. Um, old yeah. girl, we'll call her old girl for right now. Um, there's a video and I remember us talking about it of like, um, uh, Yeshua was like a star seed that had his like twin flame pairing. And there were some words of like really celestial angelic frequencies of like earth was switching timelines and Yeshua was like a high level. What's this word? Not, um, not, not obviously not Nephilim, but, um, it's like a high level angel term. Yeah, um, so it be he. Yeah, but he was like, yo, and it was part of the soul group that was like, we need to assist this this planet in shifting because their consciousness is really decaying and it's getting wonky. It's time that we enter and and augment things, which law of one uh Ra's teaching talks about this as well. It's like only do higher, higher density beings interact with or involve themselves with the potential course correcting moments of earth and lower density beings choices in their evolution as a society when shit's really hitting the fan kind of thing and that's basically i just wanted to pass baton back and say like that seems like that's exactly what happened and yeshua was really that yeah definitely um souls on mission from the higher harmonic universe like five or beyond five and let me just let me touch on that a little bit so um there are different harmonic universes that exist and some of them um so we have our incarnate body and then we have our soul and then our over soul and then our dolar which is also known as our avatar and then our solar self and there's different realms that um they overlap in pairs of three so if you understand harmonics and musical scales like octaves jump in 12 keys right and so every single octave has like 12 and this is why there's multiples of 12 and like zodiac within the day and night and like everything essentially and so where the christic realm is is actually the um, harmonic universe five and this is this sits right below the buddhic plane and the neuronic plane and so these beings will incarnate from these higher octaves of consciousness on um, solstice days and equinox days, because that's where the, the sections of four on the wheel exist. Me being like one of them. <laughs> uh, and it's very interesting because beings from there, like, it's, it's law of one. It's singular. It's like, we're one consciousness, it's it's unconditional love, it's pure, right? And that's that's how we understand things. And it's very, it's very interesting, like coming into this world, be being a pure vessel and navigating through the realm, because not everyone speaks the same language, right? And our mission here is to bring back the souls, like remind they're like in a dream state, they're sleeping. It, our, our, our job is to retrieve the fallen souls. And a lot of, um, just to add more back history on this stuff, there have been many missions on this planet throughout the, the ages um, of galactic wars. Like Star Wars is real. <laughs> and uh, the Matrix is real as well. If you study the esoteric teachings, um, Yalda Bayoff is this being that created the simulation. So you might understand the story in a different way, but um, Sophia essentially was in the Plamora and she, What's that's Plamora? where things were. It's like the sphere of all things. And outside of it was like nothingness, it's like infinite nothingness, right? It's potential. This is like the beginning of this holographic universe's essence in creation yeah 
This so is Genesis. Can, this is Genesis. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is the story of Genesis. So in the beginning, Sophia, which is like Christic love, existed in this realm, and she was essentially like, I wonder what's outside of the bubble, and so she yearned to know, and so she left the bubble. And she fell into darkness. And from her madness and fear of never returning back home, she created this being, um, this child out of, out of fear and anger and hatred and malice known as Yaldabaoth. And this being um, essentially created our holographic universe. And this is what we call Kronos and Saturn? Yeah, you can call it that too. Those are sure. variations of it, technically. Variations of that um, archetype, yeah. Right. And so... Could you call yeah. could you call could you call that y'all the bay offs uh and and Kronos and Saturn the primary archon? Oh yeah, for sure. He's the chief archon. And archon means ruler, ruler of the spheres, ruler of the frequencies of the planets, right? Ruler of the mental archetypes. And so um Yeshua, uh Sophia's divine counterpart, came and retrieved her. And, but from there, the holographic matrix was already created, right? And so this being thinks that it's, the, it's God. Um, there's many stories on it, but it's essentially, it created the simulation that we're in, like this matrix where it, our souls are kind of trapped here. And it's, it gets very like trippy in a sense, because like, let's say you create a computer program, right? And you go into the metaverse. Well, you can create a computer program inside of the metaverse and then go in that and then infinitely fractalize, right? And that actually slows time down. And so these beings, because they're not, they don't have solar light, they can't digest it, they feed off of us. And, th and this is the idea of false light versus true light. Mm -hmm. And this is also the idea of uh, basically AI is once true life that decayed and disassembled and fractalized all these times that said man why would i try to become whole again when i could just duplicate myself and save myself false save myself on yeah. a server and yes. that server then i can actually be god of a server and that's yeah. where the, that's where the visuals from the matrix i think are so elemental that when people who are, you know have no gnosis watch the matrix and you know, and makes and Neo comes out of the goo, and you're and he looks around, and there's all these pods, and everyone's asleep. It's like that is so al elemental, and it's an alchemical, and it's so universal, and it's so. And I think this is where, like, my intention and, and my medicine comes, and why I think we're such a fun duo is like, okay, boom, let's make it dirty and muddy again. It's like talk about pragmatic utilitarian spirituality. Um, and, and where we kind of started off, what we we're talking about, it's like, um, not on some spiritual bypassing, that shit is real on a primal level. There's no real gnosis needed to understand the, 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 the kind of scary situation. If you had got tricked that you were free, but you weren't, and you were actually a slave in a sleep, mm -hmm. that shit as a concept is very intriguing to any person really yeah. whether they're enlightened or totally asleep but it's what we're talking about is like yeah that shit actually runs way deeper though way deep a quick, a quick little insert there um hypnos is actually the god of of dreams and sleep and he's also known as morpheus and thanatos is his twin brother which is death <laughs> and what's that those are greek terms mm -hmm. Greek terms and Morpheus is actually the 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 ruler of dreams and illusions and his ship is the Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. And wait, what's the Nebuchadnezzar again? I know it's a biblical term. It's a biblical term. I I can't remember. Right king now. isn't it a king or? Oh right, right, yeah, King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Right, right. And I think he did something important or something. He who wears the crown, and they live in um they live in Zion. Um, here's the fun drip down sequence delineation. I've interfaced this year, 2021, with a lot of people, and I'm sure, sure, I'm sure we all have. Um, but some people, it's just 
pleasant, man. And I would say that that's Christ consciousness. It's like unity awareness, unity presence, because it's not just me and then you're over there. It's like, no, we're this now together. Oh, and it's this harmonious, real thing. And then there's certain conscious, certain consciousness orientations, certain degradations of the I am presence that shows up in the framework of certain people that it is just, I like this word wonky. I don't think I used the word wonky before 2021. Um, anytime that I have interfaced with someone and it happened recently, that's why I was bringing it up and it all comes to what we've been talking about. Anytime I interface with someone who they're like, yeah, I'm a Mason. I'm like, mm, why do you feel like chalkboards and glue or something? Yeah. It's, it's a kind of psychological framework that is, I, I think what I'm pointing at is it's separation consciousness based. Yeah. It's, it's not on a hot based. It's lower Dantian based. Yeah. It's, it's lower Dantian based with potentially really perceptive Ajna third eye yeah. understanding and gnosis yeah. uh, on a, on a psychological intellectual level, but there's something and funny enough, there's something even in the throat in, in Bishuddhi and then definitely in the heart radiance of Anahata that's like dim. It's like, that's yeah. dim. And the whole thing with Vishuddhi is like, they don't say, they're not on that sharing that they know. It's almost like they're, they've constructed an identity complex that hides that they know. And it reminds me of, reminds me of like a Phoenix flytrap almost type of situation. Um, have you interfaced with Freemasons? And if so, what's that been electromagnetically for you? Uh, yeah, definitely. I've interfaced with quite a few Masons in my, my time. Um, some are really cool. Some are really down to earth. Some are really pretty open. Um, others are trapped in this psychological psychosis. <laughs> and um, some are actually being manipulated by entities and they don't even know it. It's really... I just it's very fascinating. Um, just on the topic of being like too intellectual and not having heart, everything works in pairs of three. It's like the Trinity. So we have our three lower chakras, our three higher chakras, right? And so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Our heart chakra and our third eye um, need to work in unison for, actually, for us to vocalize things into the material universe. Major. Otherwise, it's disjointed. Uh, I see this as, as a, like a full spectrum integrated being. It's like a melody. It's God's, it's part of God's melody. And when you really click into your dharmic path and you line up with your soul group, that's the symphony. And it's all electromagnetic. And this biophotonic, bioluminescent, um, it's definitely androgynous. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I like using the word and it feels good to use the word plasma based, but I suppose yeah. I don't know the actual quantum technical actuality of that, but um, yeah, it feels like it's plasma based, solar light based. Um, it's something about organic as well. It's like organic frameworks versus like uh, yeah, inorganic frameworks. Like, they organize energy differently yeah. and certain frameworks organize energy in a way that's um was talking about it with jhana who's a an incredible yogi and it's like certain beings you can see that they have one nadi that's shut down but others mm -hmm. that are super hyperactive and they kind of aren't looking at the one that's shut down because these other ones are hyperactive yeah. um and it's almost like those create archetypes and like, uh, you know, red root and yellow ray is activated, but they don't actually have like great self-esteem. So it's the, the, the solar plexus and, and, and sacral chakra are kind of like diminished, but they're like really grounded. And then they're like, speak, they, they talk, they're loud mouths or something, but you don't feel their heart in it. Mm -hmm. um and they're definitely not open to something higher 
it's a Dell introduced this term to me. It's like it's a canopy. Um, it's like when Sahasrara is not open, it's like a canopy being. They're not really functioning on a higher plateau. It's and you talk about we started talking about that of like we are multidimensional, but yeah, I think I think what we're pointing at is like some framework, some psychological frameworks cause people to not be multidimensional, which they are, yes, but they kind of sever those parts of themselves. Ooh, fun turn. Then this gets into NPCs. NPCs, yeah. That's the non that. non-playable characters, which also yeah. is an is it's a is a fun Easter egg for kind of spiritual seekers that watched the first matrix and then got into like the breakdown of everything and like the quantum physics of it, where it's just like R is and it was, I heard um I don't think Elon Musk was talking, maybe was. I, I saw it on some quick moment on, on social media or something like that. But people were talking about like, is everyone actually a real soul that's mm -hmm. out here? Or are some of the people that are here with us bots? Yeah. And then it's funny, it's not like on an inch, uh, my friggin' nephew's 12. And I mean, he doesn't know what we're talking about, but he, he had, there's a quick moment where so it was something funny. He's like doing a tech deck on the table. And I tried to do it and I like dropped it and he was just like bot. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, bro, did you just call me a bot, bro? And it's like, it's like, um, and this this casket, this topic cascades into a bunch of cool stuff. Cause we're yeah. we're 90s babies, right? Yeah. What a cool and and you've also talked about um you brought this to you, you illuminated this for me as well. And I've done these trauma therapy sessions with folks and, and the question has come up many different times, men, women, young, old, but why, why this? And it's, and in those moments, the heart is so clear. The heart is so clear because this is the most special situation possible because now is the lifetime where you integrate that. And you talked to me about the, um, how earth is literally in this galactic, literally situational exact placement where it's the heart chakra of the whole multi-cosmo situation. Um, I'm gonna give you a, a multi-tandem tiered Gatorade bottle question situation. Um, and it's got a white piece of tape on it that says MJ's secret stuff. Um, talk, talk about us being who we are, which basically kind of like super fans of Yeshua, but also like baton carriers of Yeshua, which is the same lineage that many have come in, which we have a sacred silent vow to. Talk about that as like a metaphysical, like ninja situation, but also the 90s kids being the kids that were the last analog generation, really, like mm -hmm. prior to digital everything. So we're the bridge kids, really. Yeah. But then also on a, like a psychic skill set level, we yeah. see the old muggles with no CD powers and no psychic skill set. But we're also, we're, we're kind of here I'm pointing at, it's like, okay, earth is in this very specific place. That's just like the most profound specific place. It's the heart chakra of the whole galaxy. Mm -hmm. 90s kids are this generation that we're like, we kind of feel special. We're the last analog generation, but we've got enough, we got, we just a little bit of it and then boom we get the digital stuff pokemon and you know <laughs> neo, neo pets and etc um and then also the yogi ninja samurai kind of like frequency of the end of pisces the mayan calendar six sun stuff in 2012 um yeah all right my your turn um you hear that double, or it's not even double, but you hear the stack that I'm kind of looking at? Yeah. It's um, baton passing, evolutionary stages of consciousness. Um, what did you, what's the last thing that you mentioned? It, it, it's like I'm looking at the sweet spot. It's like, uh, it's like an algorithm point. It's like phi. It's like yeah. pi. It's like it's like the golden ratio that shows up in pop culture as a generation yeah. spiritual alchemy lineages as a yeah. creed and then also the geographical placement in the galaxy of earth mm -hmm. so every age has its waking sleeping cycles as i aforementioned 
Um, we exist. If for those who are listening, uh, look up Lenny Akinna. Lenny Akinna, I think Lenny Akinna. I think that's what it's called. It's essentially this um, observable point of the universe, and it looks exactly like the human heart. Like it flows exactly like that, and our galactic core exists like, right in the center of it. So we exist on like this galactic superhighway. Lenny Akinna, spell it. I think it's a Hawaiian term. Um, Lenny Akia, maybe Lenny Akia. L e n i a, Lenia. L a n i. I don't really know how to spell it right now. All right, keep going. It's a oh 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 Lenia Kia. Lenia Kia. Okay, cool. Supercluster. Lenia Kia supercluster. Yeah. 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 There's other images of it too. Well, this is just Lenia Kia. I think Wikipedia, which the okay. first like twelve yards of Wikipedia are like, please don't scroll past this. Please send us money. Oh my God, everything, please. All right, right. let me make a super question. And so... Um, oh, this one looks like kind of what you're talking about. A little bit more, yeah. It's like this golden place in the center is like yeah, super yeah. ideally placed. And then all of those yeah, white yeah. things are actually co- like galactic planes of their own right. Yep. We're like the Disneyland of the galaxy. <laughs> so I've heard. Um, so existing at this point in juncture, it's like a lot of souls incarnate here for a particular reason to bring beings out of the matrix and into like what, what people would call the galactic federation. And it's essentially like this, um, it's like Star Trek really, you know, when a particular civilization reaches a, a level of, um, evolution, uh, internally they are allowed to graduate and be like hey there's more (laughs) and so 90s babies we it's really interesting how this generation now they're so plugged into the digital like they're really trapped in the matrix and the further like further we advance i mean it's straight up the matrix situation. Everyone's going to be living in the metaverse. Everyone's going to be working from there. You're going to, you know, have holographic office meetings in, in VR and in AR. Like that's just where we're headed. Right. And like a lot of wild things are going to happen in the metaverse. And it's amazing. And I think it's just a part of nature, how, how it works because everything that, eventually evolves or evolves organically it starts to obtain an organic structure and i think it's just this is just the advent of um of ai and ai is artificial intelligence of absolute intellect with no heart and in the book of the law one it's known as luciferian consciousness and lucifer if you actually study the back history of what it is it really it doesn't have much to do with the devil the church just indoctrinated you to believe that Lucifer, uh, if you if you look up if you look up the dictionary definition of phosphorus, you'll find um, luxus in there, which is light. And it's a form of Lucifer, right? And phosphorus is actually um, responsible for carrying different messengers to your base pair DNA. And if you study base, uh, the base pair DNA and genetics, like adenine, guanine, thi- um, thymine, and cytosine, these are actually the four faces on the cherubim, which are the, the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of a lion, and the face of an eagle. The eagle is interchanged as Scorpio as well. And so these are the four faces um, that are on the zo- around the zodiac wheel. And these represent uh, Aquarius, uh, Taurus, Leo and Scorpio. And these base pair DNA are essentially conjoined through hydrogen. And hydrogen, 444, <laughs> hydrogen is Christ light. Hydrogen is, is Christ. And on the, on the sides of the base pair DNA is phosphorus, which carry the chemical messengers through to the base pair DNA. So it's all out chemical allegory, but at the same time, because it is, it has to exist. In, in its different expressions. Does that make sense? 
So yeah. like people will say like in Egypt, the netru are these internal principles of myth. And they don't really exist. They just exist as like uh, natures, nat principles of nature, right? Netter. But principles of nature, because we are existing in simultaneous worlds, exist in their own form. So there's actually ways in Egypt to contact the netru through um, frequency mechanics and understanding of biofields. And the Egyptians knew all about this. And uh, I don't know, should I, should I talk about it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just getting the coolest freaking images known to humanity about um, <laughs> the Leniakia. I hope I'm saying it right. But like literally it's in the center of the whole situation, but then it looks like a heart or it exactly. looks like it looks like neurons or neuro neurology and like um uh what's it called uh the uh the electro body the electra what's the word i'm looking for um, nervous system like, yeah uh, like the nervous systems the the nerves the little nerve endings mm -hmm. um but all these these are crazy looking it's like this is the galactic situation and it was like anyways and it's like an as above so below situation yeah because everything it's like is the heart everything is the soul and it's like this you probably compare some of these things to the nervous system and it's a lot similar and this is talking about molecular neurological stuff and it looks the same almost exactly as galactical cosmical stuff it's exactly the same um you're about to head into somewhere with with phosphorus and, and as above so below i think that's very interesting so um, the heart actually has more neurons than the brain. And we're able to utilize, like at the cross sections of the gateways of the four um, corners of the wheel, right in the dead center of the heart is a tiny space between the four chambers where it's a gateway system. If you're able to access it, which there are methods to do that, you can tap into your past lives and remember and see things. I've done this multiple times. And so there's that. Let's get let's get into the um, the Egyptian stuff. Yes. So in Egypt, magical Egypt is an amazing docu documentary, by the way. Um, for those who want to check it out, Fine. bless up John Anthony West. Um, so in the Temple of Man, the structures are made in such a way that every section that you enter is a different chakra system. So you're actually entering a macrocosmic, uh, synth symphonic, geometric architecture structure of your own body. And when you enter these, these places, your biofield um, interacts with the structures in harmony. And uh, right where the Holy of Holies is, is where the pineal gland would be. That's where the high priests and priestess are, right? They're behind, they're beyond the veil, behind the veil. This is where, this is how the church does things too. Like there's the preacher and then there's like the behind, no one is allowed back there. And that's where the Holy of Holies is. And so they understood this, um, this harmony with frequency and like living sound, right? And so one of the things that the high priesthood would do is they would use their digit pillars, which are essentially like spinal columns um, inside of their harmonic chambers. And they would resonate solfeggio tones and frequencies, which are the frequencies of the planets. And when you combine all the frequency of the pla uh, planets together, it creates 528 Hertz, which is known as the miracle tone. But there's a particular tone at 963 Hertz, where when you listen to it, under the influence of psilocybin, you can actually make direct contact with the netru. And so the entire Egyptian culture was based off consciousness expansion. And they were a culture based off of mushrooms, mushroom worship and mushroom envy. You can, like all of their headdresses, all of their talismans and everything, all mushrooms, <laughs> if you really look at it. And- You're talking about, um, you're talking about like the-, the you're talking about the royal hip Egyptian like headdress and everything. It's all based. How is that based on mushroom? There's there's images. I can show you it sometime later, but it's like the nub of how mushroom sprouts and like right, the it's layers. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's all mush it's they're all mushrooms Even i've seen it fact. i've seen it i've seen it depicted that it's like it's the actual auric field and like the rainbow body and and their their garments and different aspects of the ornate kind of uh d- uh decor body armor stuff is like auric field uh references as well mm-hmm. and they're like the one in the same right like you look at the bottom of the letter and it's the same as like um, a priest's halo or something, right? And so the the high priests would listen to, um, under the influence of psil- psilocybin, go into this chamber, listen to 963 hertz. Then they would use Egyptian healing rods, which um, one's made of copper, one's made of zinc. This attunes the bioelectric field or the aura and it locks it in. So this is known as phase locking. So basically, you pick a channel of frequency, which is 960 hertz, on a radio station, which is what you are, a Tesla giant Tesla walking Tesla mushroom coil, right? And then you phase lock into that dimension, and you can directly speak to these beings. It's like locks in the bandwidth to communicate. Exactly. Right. With use of crystal technology as well. Pretty advanced stuff. Yeah, it's pretty advanced. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I when I ingest psilocybin, I want to be so um, down to earth. And also, when you close off the sensories, it's easy to go to those places where it's like this is obviously um, earthly, but it's super extraterrestrial. It's super cosmic um this also feels like the nature of christ is to be multi uh, radial like non-local it is consciousness is able to expand and traverse and journey and do these fun things and yet this kind of dogmatic restrictive fear-based yeah. culture is like uh I mean, part of that video that I sent you of old dude talking about how you know yoga's evil and stuff. It's like um, there's there's I'm sure you've seen some of those memes and stuff where it's like astral projection is like <laughs> dangerous that and you can yeah. get entities and it's like yeah yeah you can it is actually you don't don't fuck around if you don't know what you're doing but it frames it in a way where it's like it just makes all Christians that are hearing that just like <gasps> yeah S- some points. Um... I like to touch on with that is like you wouldn't put put a person in a car if they didn't know how to drive the car, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what it's like with astral projection. Like you have to understand what you are, um, what what your environment is, and what other environments you can travel to are, right? And the same thing with um with like perception. Honestly, like people only have a particular bandwidth, but it's all, it's like, we're all just giant radio stations or TV channels. You just need to hop in on the frequency. So, um, so for instance, like all all these worlds exist in in and out all around us, right? And these, it's like, I guess let's make it more relevant. Um, Pokemon Go spent $300 million on integrating it into the metaverse. And uh, iPhone is about to drop their new AR glasses. So within less than a decade, people are going to have Pokemon following them around uh, while wearing like AR fashion wear, right? And we're only able to see that because of the bandwidth of glasses or frequency that we're tapping into. But it's there. It's there, yeah. Um, How do you feel? Huh? How do you feel about that? I feel it's fun. It's like, I feel integral and strong and in the light and invincible to uh something that could come from a screen so i suppose because i feel secure and confident in my electromagnetics i don't feel this is wrong it feels like oh yeah part of the playground is expanding into a new sector with a (laughs) rainbow light up slide and monkey bars made out of (laughs) diamonds and like whoa cool um you know, it feels like to me, it's like it's you're living in The Sims and they're like uh, new downloadable content available. Want to want to go to Disneyland? It's like, ooh, cool. So, yeah, it feels like I don't know. It just feels like kind of what 
kids like us have been prepared for with Neopets, with, with these things that were like bringing us into like learning about ourselves by how we treated these digital things and these digital items. We've, we've, we've had that connection since we've been knowing each other. And it's, yeah. it's like a bandwidth of our own kind of acknowledgement that that isn't weird, bad stuff. It's fun. It's like you, you, you really talk to another, I don't want to just say nineties kids, but I don't know. It kind of feels like it is a, a millennial. You know, uh, yeah, a label for it that helps you kind of quickly identify it. But yeah, millennials or whatever you want to call it. But you talk to somebody who like really grew up on Pokemon. It's like there's this love for digital world and tech, but there's not they're not like disconnected from the real world. It's almost like it helps them live in the real world more. You have a posture about you, and it also helps you take the real world a little less serious. Um, to to that, it's like. Uh, this is going to bridge a couple of things, it, you know, in this, uh, the kind of dogma, f- f- uh, fear-based frequency from dude about like, oh, yoga's bad, oh, everything's bad, There's, oh, Jesus is the only way, everything else is bad. It's like, man, have you ever played Pokemon? Um, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't like force Pokemon on somebody who is like afraid of animals. I don't know. I was like, I wouldn't force it on anybody. I wouldn't force anything on anybody, really. But that's also part of this whole like savior complex, which is a weird like algorithm within that whole culture. Um, and it's like uh, he, he, in this one video, he's talking about, you know, Kundalini is this snake and it goes up the spine and he talks about it as if it's like an evil snake that like it's like a ghost. It's like a ghost snake that eats you from the bottom. And it's like, man, you got to really not understand what your sexual energy is to be scared by that idea. But at the same level, I can I can empathize and I can radiate into understanding where that comes from, because I remember in my adolescence, before any kind of awakening experience, snakes were weird. Sexuality was scary. Um, The Illuminati was like a really scary idea. All these things that I didn't understand they did freeze me. They did imprison me in a kind of triggered, disempowered way. Um, But the more and more that I got to understand that I'm the creator of, I'm the co-creator of my reality. And these are things that are ingredients here. And if I understand why they're here, I disassemble the fear of them because I understand them. And when I put them in understanding and gnosis, I I have that gnana understanding and yogic togetherness and in togetherness I'm not separate from and in that non-separation I close the gap and I put it in the light and it's now in the light with me and I have understanding with it so in that same way I think people don't have yoga with technology I think that there's like baby boomers probably that look at freaking fax machines as the beginning of the end like you know, I, I remember when I heard the dial up signal and I knew we were all fucked. It's like, I'm sure I'm sure technology triggers certain people. I'm sure yoga triggers certain people. Yeah. I'm sure Pokemon triggers certain people. It don't mean it's bad just because you got scared from it. And um, yeah, something like that. You know, what's really funny is that the t- external technology that we have it's all just replications and copies of the internal factual like we we have pokemon i can go to the forest and invoke some gin and like they can be my homies and follow me around and then and then you start looking at uh creatures that really exist i mean i think you actually shared with me something recently like someone put it in the water or something like that but like there's creatures that are a lot i mean i'm i'm with malachite now pretty often and this dude is the most pokemon being i've ever met but it's real pokemon are real beings and you spend time with like an animal and a creature they for sure have psychic dialogue going on all the time it's really fascinating yeah Yeah. how like our we're really just empty cups. We, I can rewrite my gene codes through sound vibration and like acquire new abilities. Kind of like in Spider-Man, like the amazing Spider-Man and Oscorp. Which by the way, I haven't seen the new one, so don't give me no spoilers quite yet. Nope. We'll have a, we'll have a follow-up where I've watched Spider-Man 
and we both watch Matrix, and then we yeah. can talk about it. No. <laughs> it sounds fun. Which I actually heard that you can stream the Matrix, the new one, uh, on HBO Max. So I think I'm going to do no that. Way. The show. I they did, and they did that with Dune. Nice. Did, you see, did you see Dune? I came out so early. <laughs> yeah, I did. Man, that shit affected me, man. That was like when that came out and I made a beat that for whatever reason it felt like Dune. So I named it Dune even before I watched the movie, which I had seen the old one and I didn't read none of the books. But then I have seen the documentary Jodorowsky's Dune, which is fascinating. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. But this new one that came out <clears throat> felt like the most special signal available to humanity. And in it where he's like, uh, he's about to pass out um, by the big thing and, and the, the big worm thing, he's coming and he's like getting this vision and he falls to his knees and it's like, yo, that's DMT if I ever seen it. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's like mystical, but it like it affects the biology. The biology actually submits to it, but it falls to the knees in this reverence because it's like, yo, what's ha uh, uh, And it's like super transcendent, like seeing your highest vision of reality possible happening and it's integrating it's like that it's that phrase like what you're seeking is also seeking you mm -hmm. and then you realize that that's real and it's like that timeline it's like you it's like the whole harry potter situation with the um spectro patronum you know it's like it was actually always you you mm -hmm. were always you who was reaching back to you from the future yeah. and you were reaching towards that future self from your present yeah weaving and then it's like all of the versions of you are like wait it's all yeah um i'm excited to see part two where him and zendaya situate i'm glad you brought that up um before i before i touch on that i just want to say like for those who haven't already who are like millennials you need to watch um Digimon The Last Evolution is straight up like a rite of passage. <laughs> Man. And there's a lot of allegory and stuff in there about AI too. So which let's just do a let's just do a quick shameless plug. You have a website, I believe, and I don't want to preempt it if it's not ready, but you do that's a thing that you're you playlist anime that yeah. have spiritual codes, right? Yeah. I've been working on it for a couple months now. Um anime playlists, Spotify playlists, YouTube playlists of just like all the stuff that I've archived throughout the years. And I've made it really simple for people to digest and just enjoy it. And that's on, that's on, available on a website that people can get to? It's going to be available on my website. Not yet though. Not yet. Gotcha. Soon. Thank you for that, brother. Is, is there a URL that you want to announce or maybe just later? Uh, I mean, just awakenconsciouscollective.com. It'll be announced there when it happens. Mm-hmm beautiful and, and on the as well yes yes and retroactively i'll add that link to this whenever it does come out so people a year from now maybe they hear this it, it'll be it'll be here awesome yeah. you were about to go to somewhere else though yeah i was about to go i don't remember now digimon and then um time time travel so we are time isn't linear we are in direct connection and contact with our, our future selves and our past selves simultaneously. So if I make a decision to do or be something, it'll affect potential future realities. And if I were to make a decision to reach out into the past um, through a technology, through time travel, or even psychically, because the mind travels faster than any technology could, your consciousness, um, you can actually embed code into your future self to send information back in the past that you will receive as quote unquote visions or you can um have an intention for your future self to affect your past self before incarnation too that will then eventually be this reality which is pretty interesting what you know about neville goddard what's that neville neville goddard um uh 
uh, Caucasian man from like the 1930s to 50s, prolific writer, speaker, kind of like, um, what's the name? Uh, something Earl Nightingale or like uh, the dude who is like um, Think and Grow Rich, you know, like mm. it's yeah. like the, it's like those like it's like those early, early law of attraction type vibes mm -hmm. that were like dudes, dudes were basically like enlightened in the thirties talking about law of attraction from the framework of Christianity, but the mystic Christianity. Um, uh, I, I got on Neville Goddard, uh, heard him, heard him, you know, Manly Palmer Hall, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like get, getting into Manly Palmer Hall and I find Krishnamurti and um, um, what's old dude's name the start of the school system. Um, oh, it's blanking on me, but he's a, he's a weirdo. He's a skinny guy. But, they were, you know, Blavatsky is like the, the madam or whatever. And then mm -hmm. Krishnamurti, Stein, Stein, Steiner, Rudolf, Rudolf Steiner. Thank you. Waldorf, he's responsible for a lot of American uh, situations that people probably heard of called Waldorf schools, if you don't know, Rudolf Steiner. Amazing, but also potentially a weirdo, but that's another side. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyways, I'm like listening to Manly Palmer Hall lectures, and then I'm like getting into that sect of like, um, uh, man, what was the other dude? He was like in the South and he was uh, Edgar Casey. You know, like there's these, these examples of like white dudes in America in like the beginning of the industrial revolution that were full on freaking yogic masters of the occult, like seeing, witnessing the true Christos and like speaking in a way that like people were like, whoa, that's vibes. But I'm also not super triggered because of the old stuff that I'm programmed by. Yeah. All that to say, I found this dude Neville Goddard, very prolific. He was from that era. And um, he talked, he talks about how the, you know, the Bible is basically the super mysterious uh, allegory for consciousness. And you are the Christ and the Christ, therefore, in its highest example is your imagination when you are most excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, every character in the Bible is represents a state of consciousness and a version of you. He said he has all these codes, but he uh, he talks about the secret is living in the end. And so you feel as if it's already happened. Yeah. And then you feel as if this thing that you want that you feel for right now is in the future. Yeah. Put it behind you, actually, that you just did it. Now, how will you feel and what was it like? Now tell someone about how it was and you put yourself more and more in that. So yeah. this is a this is a bridge to what you were saying about like yeah. It's basically time travel. Yeah. And, and dear brother Bentino Massaro speaks about this a lot as well. This is, this is a non-duality self-actualization principle, which as you realize the true nature of the Atma Christo self, you actualize it however the fuck you want, which is really fun. It's the most fun thing that can literally happen. You know, it, it is God's dream. This is a God's dream. You know, it really is supposed to be the most fun thing possible. Which then when you see people who are super, super lit in the world, you're like, man, they're not missing out on anything. Shameless plug. Missing out on anything. They're fully reflective, shameless plug, of their full divine potential. And so others who are basically sleepwalking, who are feeling they are missing out or in that perpetual FOMO and their light isn't illuminating because they're turned away from the light. So it's that new moon phase where they're they're ignoring their brightness. They're not devoted to the brightness of their true light, which comes from the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> helio, helio uh, uh, astro theology there for sure. Um, but yeah, this whole idea of like switching, Bentinho has got so many videos where he talks about that, where you're basically switching holographic realities every freaking second. Mm -hmm. and, and science easily proves this, but no one, yeah no one takes um, non-realized people don't take the time to really break down like wait a minute my skin cells are falling off by the millions right now right now right now right now uh something like 70 is maybe this it feels like it's less than that but like every 70 days you're molecularly 100 different like bone 
Is it more years? Is it more like years or something? Um, yeah, I think it's seven years. Not yeah, sure. but it's like, and this gets into also the koshas and the pliability of the koshas, which for me is why it gets back to. I don't want to turn this into a political conversation, but why a plant-based diet and someone like Dr. Sebi was on the high leading edge of Christ consciousness by saying, yo, the more now you are in your digestive system means that what you're intaking doesn't take so freaking long to process. And it doesn't have emotional material from another sentient being that you're also processing electromagnetically that then gets stored in your gut and in, you know, intestinal tract. So you're actually able to be more now because the apple you ate didn't have emotions and mm -hmm. literally just biodegradably digest through your system faster. Um, but then, yeah, to the idea of like, not the idea, but the reality of and yes, idea of it being a holographic reality. The more we practice traveling to our dreams realized and traveling to that thing that we know would make us feel whole and thing that we know would make us feel good and complete which is dharma which is drishti having that focus being a focused person being on your mission and not missing out on that turning into the light and reflecting that being the change you wish to see that's that whole, that's the whole thing but then being the version of yourself who did all of it already and then yes you show back up here and you're still this version but you've just wed that yes. version and so you're interlocking. It's the uh, the image of, you know, when they get on the in at the movie Avatar, where they get on the horse thingies, flying creatures or whatever, and it's like the tentacles, like yeah. they're finding each other, and then they're like grabbing, and it's such it's such a reflection of that same look of the nervous system, but also Thank how you. how vines grow up trees, mm -hmm. um, how the like neurochemistry's firing when the brain's going off and stuff but also those same patterns that we just looked at as like the actual galactical, mm -hmm. galactical is not a word, we galactic co cosmic shape of like, you know, those neuro fibers as well, as yes. above, so below verbatim, yeah. basically. Yeah. Where it's the entire world is a tree. We live in the world tree. <laughs> Talk about the wisdom of XXS Tentacion, go. <laughs> Oh man, X. Dude, dude put a tree on his pineal gland for a reason. Yeah, and he was insp inspired by Shiloh Dynasty to do that. I think it came from one of their album covers. And also Shiloh, a couple- Shiloh Dynasty? Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar. No, you got, definitely got to check him out. Amazing, amazing music. Um, okay, before I touch on X, and time travel stuff, phase locking into a perceived emotional uh, reality will make it so. It's just how it works. You are a soul. Everything around you, you're just inside of an energetic vehicle. And if your solar being syncs with the geometry that you seek to be in, that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> that, re that really makes a reality out of the phrase, it is what it is. <laughs> it's what it is, yeah. <laughs> And uh, with X, like he, there's, there's just so much I can say about X, P for juice, but like X, he really understood alchemy. Like he understood how to move a crowd, how to move people and create a safe space for people to let go of their, their anger. And I think that's so important to, to have containers that like where you're able to express aspects of yourself um, that need to be healed. This to me drops us right back into where we kind of started. And uh, I think it's a good place for us to kind of trail off also, because I just got a message from the neighbors that they want to watch the Matrix joint on HBO. Oh, so I think it's almost time for that. That sounds good. I'm gonna see if I can peep that too today. But but so X is like a perfect example of somebody who these are terrible podcasting um, tactics to turn away from the camera and just be doing something else while on a podcast. Hold on one second. It happens. Oh oh yeah, I'm definitely watching Resurrection today. <laughs> I, had to plug, I had to plug in. Um, 
Yeah, it's like someone like X is like the dark and the light in between a gray Jedi where you hear him talk about love, you hear him talk about violence and anger. And I was just hearing Big Sean talk about this on uh, on Drink Champs where it's like hopefully more people and, and artists specifically become more and more conscious of what they are channels for and what they are karmic alchemy mirrors to the collective for what frequency specifically so you don't have folks talking about violence talking about violence talking about violence and then surprise when they get shot hopefully a bit more conscious as to yeah talk about the darkness as much as it's relevant because you can't act like that's not happening if it is happening and if you're really called to that like i mean thank god that x stood in that frequency as he did because he brought light to that darkness in an incredibly powerful way that I know millions of young people still are, are benefiting from his gospel to this day. Absolutely. But, but that's a great example of somebody who's an alchemist that says, I'm, well, this is, this is an interesting statement, but I'm Jesus and Lucifer. I'm whatever is helpful because, you know, uh, Jesus in the hood with a gun around a bunch of you know fiends it, it looks different and it might have to you know it might have to x and o some stuff to to actually get the work done and certain souls take that karmic structure on and it's like man good good on good on you but it's not for everybody obviously for sure yeah it reminds me of this excerpt of like one time i i went to santa cruz and i met up with this um dude who knew like Terrence McKenna's brother and he wanted to work on some project with me, but we ended up meeting up with like these um, travelers and they, uh, he was a devout uh, Buddhist monk and he was just traveling, like spreading the word. And one, one story that uh, stood out to me in particular, I was like, it was nighttime, I was freezing, but I was just there listening to this guy and like his story was giving me warmth. And he was saying um, that in particular, initiatory practices in Buddhism, the monk actually goes into a graveyard and feeds his body of light to the ghouls in the cemetery so that the darkness can be illuminated by light. And it's that's a form on, of that, that's, that's on That's on some true put your body on the cross type vibe. Yeah. Real sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know how many Christians I'd be able to talk to this, talk about this with. But when I see X, I see, I see Christ embodied. Yeah, for sure. But in a way that's, you know, if someone breaks down his lyrics and his whatever misogyny and some other stuff that maybe you could say is not, it's not, and I don't mean do a voice about it. Uh, as soon as I talk like this, I'm obviously mocking someone. No, I don't mean <laughs> to do that. But um, yeah, it's like, dude was a young kid also. And had a lot of testosterone that needed to go in several different directions, but that doesn't mean that the Christus, the Christic Christos mission statement didn't also come through amongst those other signals. If a person is standing sovereign within their heart space, they are the Christ. Mic drop. <laughs> Man, that's a great moment to just be like, I think we're done. Feel it. <laughs> all i can say all i can say bro is uh it's 7 17 on december 22nd right now for me um all i can say is i love you so much and i see you as a deep deep reflection of the truest version of myself that i know i am and it's a blessing to to journey with you as we do so effortlessly and this is obviously part one of who knows how many let's just both say watch matrix resurrection and i'll see you soon Absolutely. It sounds good, Rev. Thank you for being the divine being that you are. December 22nd, such a powerful day. I know 22 is very prominent for you. And may these new waves come about from it. And may we continue to be the hero within the hero's journey. I say, aho, amun, amen. Thank you. I love you. Everyone tuning in. Um, Man, I was about to plug the the IG, but like, are you even active on IG anymore? Are you taking a break or what? I'm I'm taking a break right now to reset the algorithm because you know they don't like the stuff that I'm <laughs> saying. Man, that's a real real thing right now. I'm I'm experiencing it 
here on the home front as well. Um, anything you want to uh, plug or mention or send folks to on the on the way out? We've mentioned several books and several uh, movies and stuff, and um, I'll do I'll do my best to make those links available connected to this somehow. Um, but yeah, anything, any else closing words or just love? Life's a journey just to be in the moment, really. Everything else is just an illusion. You heard it here, folks. Blessings, bro. So, man, I just have to do one last little nectar squeeze. We've been talking about doing, getting on a podcast, not an IG Live, not just... <laughs> for our own private joy but yeah man thanks for joining and um much more to come mm -hmm. Bless, Bless, Bless. Bless. talk soon thank you all for listening see you next time Peace.